Hi everyone, today we're talking about bond discounts and I'm your instructor Brandy. A bond discount occurs when a company or government issues a bond for less than the face value. And a lot of times students find this very confusing. Why would a company do this? Why would a company issue a bond for less money than it's going to pay out? That's what we're going to look at today. First, let's go over some bond basics. A bond is a debt instrument that a company or government issues when they want to raise money. A bondholder invests money into the company. They receive interest at a stated rate each year. And then at the end of the bond term, the bondholder receives back the money that they originally invested to the company. So let's pretend that you have $1,000 to invest. And you're trying to decide whether to invest in Pepsi or in Coca-Cola two similar companies, similar industries. So if you invest in Pepsi, they're offering a five-year bond for your $1,000 at a 12% interest rate. This means you'd get $120 per year in interest and you'd receive your $1,000 back at the end of the five years. If you decided to invest in Coca-Cola, you can invest your $1,000 and you would receive an 8% interest rate for a five-year bond which means that you would receive $80 a year in interest and then your $1,000 back at the end of five years. So they're offering similar terms, but the interest rate is significantly different. Being a smart investor, you're gonna look at these two options and say, okay, if I invest in Pepsi, I'm going to get $120 back a year. And if I invest in Coca-Cola, I will get $80 back a year. Which one would you choose? So if you invest in Coca-Cola, you will be losing money. $40 per year. The solution to this is that Coca-Cola will offer a discount on their bond. This means that you can buy that $1,000 bond from Coca-Cola for only $855. How we calculate that will be covered in different videos, but the important part is recognizing that you, as the bondholder, purchase the bond for less than the face value. You're still going to receive $80 per year, which represents 8% of that $1,000 bond, and you're going to receive $1,000 back at the end of the five years. You get a discounted price at the beginning because they're offering you less interest over time. So now you know why companies issue bonds at a discount. Thanks for watching, everyone. A bond fund or debt fund is a fund that invests in bonds, or other debt securities. Bond funds can be contrasted with stock funds and money funds. Bond funds typically pay periodic dividends that include interest payments on the fund's underlying securities, plus periodic realized capital appreciation. Bond funds typically pay higher dividends than CDs and money market accounts. Most bond funds pay out dividends more frequently than individual bonds. Bond funds can be classified by their primary underlying assets. Government, government bonds are considered safest, since a government can always print more money to pay its debt. In the United States, these are United States Treasury Securities or Treasuries. Due to the safety, the yields are typically low. Agency, in the United States. These are bonds issued by government agencies such as the Government National Mortgage Association, Ginnie Mae, Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, Freddie Mac, and Federal National Mortgage Association, Fannie Mae. Municipal, bonds issued by state and local governments and agencies are subject to certain tax preferences and are typically exempt from federal taxes. In some cases, these bonds are even exempt from state or local taxes. Corporate, bonds are issued by corporations. All corporate bonds are guaranteed by the borrowing, issuing, company, and the risk depends on the company's ability to pay the loan at maturity. Some bond funds specialize in high-yield securities, junk bonds, which are corporate bonds carrying a higher risk, due to the potential inability of the issuer to repay the bond. Bond funds specializing in junk bonds also known as below-investment-grade bonds, pay higher dividends than other bond funds, with the dividend return correlating approximately with the risk. 
Bond funds may also be classified by factors such as type of yield, high income or term, short, medium, long or some other specialties such as zero coupon bonds, international bonds, multi-sector bonds or convertible bonds. An important property of bond funds is the rating of the bonds they own. Funds may be rated from high to low credit quality. The quality of a fund is the average of the bonds owned by the fund. Funds that pay higher yields typically own lower quality bonds. Like stocks, the price of high yield bonds is subject to fashion. For example, in late 2008, many high yield bond funds were priced at 70 cents on the dollar. In fact, there were few bond defaults and the price recovered. Due to the lower price, investors sold out of high yield bond funds, having a desire for safe cash and bonds. Funds invest in different maturities of bonds. This may be described by terms like short, intermediate, and long. This affects how the fund value changes with interest rates. Funds invested in longer bonds will have more change. As a general rule, the yield for longer bonds is higher. Bond funds usually have a target length, such as 5 to 10 years. Thus over time, they need to sell shorter bonds and buy longer bonds to stay in range. A bond fund with such a target length will never mature like a specific bond. Some newts own bonds with a specific maturity date and will terminate at that point. Junk. Not a nice word. And when it comes to bonds, not a particularly accurate word, either. Junk is something useless, right? Something you want to toss in the trash? Well, junk bonds are definitely not useless. In fact, they're extremely useful. Sometimes. So are junk bonds for you? In this video, we'll explore this underdog of the investment world and its turbulent history. We'll also learn why some bonds are dubbed junk and whether you should devote a portion of your financial portfolio to them. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. A junk bond is exactly the same as a regular bond. Junk bonds are an IOU from a corporation or organization or country that states the amount it will pay you back called the principal, the date it will pay you back known as the maturity date and the interest it will pay you on the borrowed money. Junk bonds differ because of their issuer's credit quality. All bonds are characterized according to this credit quality and therefore fall into one of two bond categories, investment grade, and junk. These are the bonds that pay high yield to bondholders because the borrowers don't have any other option. Their credit ratings are less than pristine, making it difficult for them to acquire capital at an inexpensive cost. Junk bonds are typically rated BB or lower by Standard & Poor's and BA or lower by Moody's. Junk bonds are risky investments but have speculative appeal because they offer much higher yields than safer bonds. Companies that issue junk bonds typically have less than stellar credit ratings, and investors demand these higher yields as compensation for the risk of investing in them. A junk bond issued from a company that manages to turn its performance around for the better and has its credit rating upgraded will generally have a substantial price appreciation. The U.S. companies borrowed $300 billion in the junk bond market. That equates to 5% of all of the lending done to corporations. Not too shabby, or too junky. Now in the bond market, junk is actually just a slang word for the high yield. Yield of course, is what an investor gets. An interest when they make an investment or make a loan to a company, by buying their bonds. And you know they won't make adage about risk and the reward. Well the more risk an investor takes, by lending to a riskier company. The more significant reward he or she is gonna get in the form of higher interest. A higher yield. Now when you buy into the junk bond market, when you lend a risky company money, when you buy a junk bond. It's kind of like buying a truckload of old computers. And hoping to get the gold out of them. You know that there's gold in computers. Well there's gold in some computers and you might find that some of these computers have indeed got little bits of gold in them. All right, and you may find that the first few actually, yield quite a bit of gold, but in the end, of course, you find that a lot of these other computers have got no gold in them. Or maybe they're full of heavy metals or whatever. So it's a risky business. On the other hand, you could find that all of these computers have got traces of gold in them. In which case, you could end up with a nice little bag of gold. 
At the end, it's going to make you very happy as an investor. Let's talk about companies, where companies can be risky too. Sometimes they're involved in risky businesses. Sometimes they are involved in hazardous sectors. Sometimes they've got too much debt. Whatever it is. But if you invest in one of these companies by buying their bonds. Effectively lending to them. Then you're going to get a nice big interest payment at the end of every month. Unfortunately if these companies are poorly run you might get one or two or three monthly payments. But then the companies might kind of run out of gas. Run out of the ability to make those interest payments. In which case you're gonna lose your investment. Or potentially on the other hand these companies could be very well run. Because, I'm making that nice big interest payment every month. If they manage to keep making it throughout the duration of the loan. Then you get your money back in the end. Then you've turned out with an investment, with a very lovely high yield. Now high yield companies are risky. So the bonds that they issued those junk bonds come with low credit ratings. Unlike investment grade loans. Investment grade bonds which have a higher credit rating because they're a safer bet. And let's not forget that investing in any kind of security, is a bet. Just like, buying a truckload of all computers, hoping to get gold out of them, is a bet. On the one hand, you could turn out to be really lucky. Your bet could come in and you could end up with a big bag of gold. On the other hand, you could end up bruised poisoned potentially very badly. So to understand junk bonds, let's clarify what bonds are and how they differ from stock. Whereas stocks represent partial ownership of a company, bonds are simply loans. When you purchase a bond, you're agreeing to lend money to the bond issuer, such as a company or a government. The issuer in turn is promising to pay you back the loan with interest by the date of maturity. You receive that interest regularly, often every six months. That fixed payment is why bonds are called fixed income securities, as opposed to stocks, which carry variable returns. Junk bonds are bonds issued by companies with low credit ratings, as opposed to the investment grade bonds offered by corporations with better credit and longer track records. Credit starved companies offer to pay out high interest rates to investors like you, nice enough to loan them your hard earned money. Because of their high rates of return, junk bonds are also politely called high yield bonds. Most say that a good portfolio is 60% stocks and 40% bonds and then to add on the bonds part as you age. I fully disagree because bonds are about to be a terrible investment in the future. Remember that bonds were called certificates of confiscation back in the 1970 due to constantly rising interest rates and inflation. As interest rates are at all-time lows it might happen again. When bond yields go up, bond prices go down, it is as simple as that. Where will yields and interest rates go from now on? Junk bonds are great but they should not be treated as bonds. You will do better if you think of junk bonds as high output stocks. Stock crash from time to time and junk bonds will follow them down. This is not all bad because junk bonds can really go on sale from time to time. I like a big sale. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. And subscribe. Thank you.